face instead of skating the whole day. Uh, if you're telling yourself a story about yourself currently, which one would it be? And do you believe that you are this story? That's so crazy. I wrote a question here and said, are you or are you not Anastasia? What's interesting is that like we project our own reality onto the rest of the world. Do you want to ask me or you want to ask Jack directly? I'll ask Jack. Jack, oh. get up here. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm very good. So good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Welcome to Insanity. Today, um, I thought we could play Truth or Dare. It's like a new format within the podcast. And, okay. and we have to say the truth. Um, so wh whatever question pops up, we always have to say the truth. Um, there are th three exceptions. So probably, I don't know, for some reason, maybe I ask something or you. I even have community questions. And for some reason, you just don't want to say something and that's super fine then you have to say truth socks because then <laughs> Jacques <laughs> yes because then Jacques appears he's allowed to appear three times and then you're okay. allowed to skip the question <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that is Correct. that a dirty sock have, no you just wear that <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> I'm saying the truth that's the too funny That's probably another format that's like for late night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that's funny. Cool, I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes. I always see your, your posts and I can really relate to many things that you say or that you just mm -hmm. share. And I thought so it would be super nice to talk also about your music because I really like it. And okay. yeah, I even have one of your songs in the Spotify favorites. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's cool. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Pardon me. I love this uh, one. Okay. I thought maybe I start with the first question because then we sure. can in introduce you directly. So why music? <laughs> oh, man, that's a good question. I think for me, music has been a way of like finding out more about myself. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, but um, yeah, I think everybody goes through this process of like trying to figure out who they are. Right. And trying to figure out, like, what is it that that I should do with my life? What really turns me on, so to speak? You know, yeah. what really gets me going? And, and I think that um, I think it's really interesting because as I've dove into more of, about who I am, um, I've sort of found out that, like, you know, the things that you do is you're when you're a child and your imagination is big and yeah. like you you have this like, you know, the world has a wonder to it and. Like you think nothing is impossible, right? You yes. know what I'm saying? And so when you're a child, you do these certain things or you have these certain ideas of like what your life could be. And like with age and like seeing life and everything else, it starts to kind of fade away. And it, and it doesn't seem like it, it's as real or possible. And I've just, I've studied myself to find out, you know, I have a big imagination. And I think that when I was a kid, I was gifted and talented in music um, I did plays. I was in like drama stuff and like I was really involved in those sort of things because that was really my personality. It's sort of like, you know, people start yeah. drinking, they lose all their inhibitions. And like when you're a kid, you don't worry about people judging you. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. And so I think like really what I've learned is, you know, I've learned about my 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 parents, like where I've come from. Like my mom is really big into music and she's kind of theatrical and, mm -hmm. you know, she's very outgoing and as i've suppressed these things as i've gotten older and i've looked around and i've seen like where i've come from because i think that i look like my parents and i carry <laughs> some of the personality traits i think i've been gifted the same things that they they have and i've just learned to slowly chip away from these um beliefs that i had about myself to be more open because you think about like whenever you're doing art and i know this is a long answer so <laughs> i love that <laughs> I that's okay yeah. Yes. But I think that like I think that art is something that leaves you vulnerable and kind of naked. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Because you're Definitely. you're opening yourself up. Mm -hmm. And so um I've just sort of learned over the years to just be more more like myself, you know. Um and that kind of goes into kind of like the question I was going to ask you, but we can get to that, you know, whenever you're ready. But yeah, that's that's my that's my answer is is it showing more about me? that I didn't know or that I already knew. And it's 
kind of expanding on who I am. And so it allows me yeah. that avenue, just like any art for any artist, you know yes. what I'm saying? So yes, yeah, exactly. it, it just, it just allows me to express myself, you know? Yes. So. I love <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. I love that. It, it would be actually my answer. Like the okay. same one. Like it would be my, the same answer for me, like into detail because my parents are also artists. Mm. <laughs> like, same song story. Like my, right. My dad is a concert pianist, so he's playing okay. um, until now. So he's uh, very old already and he's still playing. And my mom has been a piano teacher and also a pianist for many, many years. And she comes from a theater background as well. So I also okay. got, got the same thing. That's exact awesome. Exact same I, 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 it all makes sense. It's funny because yeah. I was going to ask you because like, I was going through your stuff and I was like, yeah. you know, what got you into playing piano? And like, I was going to ask you if you still played piano, but that answers the question right there. Yeah, but I actually, I don't play anymore. So, so since okay. many years already, I don't play because I was playing my whole childhood, like uh, from maybe six years old until 18, 19. And I was playing hardcore, like three hours a day. Sometimes I was playing with orchestra mm -hmm. and many, many concerts. And at some point, I just wanted to have free time. What changed for you? Was it was it something specifically or was it a certain um, opportunity that came up that kind of really grabbed your attention or what was it for you that kind of changed that direction? Um, I think I made a lot of sacrifice when I was younger. So mm. I didn't really go out a lot, you know, so people, or especially kids my age, they, they did more stuff. They had more fun. My parents were on business trips my dad was playing concerts all over the world so they were always off so I was alone or with my grandma or even when they were at home so then I had to visit really old people that were playing music together or or um, visiting concerts or whatever and I was the only child and I was always like sitting there thinking okay what should I do with my time now and then I all these old people like old rich people they all had libraries and stuff so I was always sitting there alone reading all their philosophy books <laughs> everything what I could oh, find yes that's cool <laughs> yes so you were reading philosophy books what who was do you have like a favorite author or like a favorite philosopher um not really a favorite one so I was um I mean, as a child, I was even reading Kant and also like the really hyper German, weird, uh, complicated uh, philosophy oh. stuff that is like, it's more, it's, it's just theory the whole time. And because I had nothing else to do, I was just reading page by page, trying to understand the terms and everything. And it's not, right. I, cu I couldn't really say I have a favorite. So there are like kind of theories that are nice or, or all of them, they developed something within me that. Um, I started to ask myself more questions or I was thinking more analytically probably and mm. um, now I think all all of the things were quite complicated so I don't think it's um, something extremely cool or special I even think that people sometimes think oh that's too much that's too too weird that's too complicated for me and I try to make it really simple because mm. um, I think the main questions are always the same. It's like, who are we? How are we thinking and feeling? Who is the one who's thinking and feeling? What do I want to do? And why do I want things like, so the question, who am I? Do I have a free will? How should a perfect society be? Two, three years ago, I started to realize that all these philosophies or all these theories, they didn't really help me. They didn't give me any answers. That's why I cannot mm. really say who's my favorite because they didn't answer anything for me. Um, what helps me is to go within. The best thing is to listen to myself. When you say that, um, I'm sorry, I, I might ask yeah. you a lot of questions if you feel yeah, like, oh, that, that's too much. No, it's awesome. Okay, all right. So when you say like they didn't really answer the questions for you, what sort of questions was it that you feel like were important to you that you were asking yourself that you were kind of maybe looking for while you were, you know, reading and, and listening to what these philosophers had to say? My main question has always been, who is God? And... Mm. Um, do I believe in a God? Mm. This was really a heavy thing for me. Wow. And um, especially because um, also in Germany, for example, you have religion as a subject, but it's not, not that strict, but still you can go there, you can go to church with your friends. And I never felt connected to that. And I never felt connected to stories. And 
when people told me it is like this and that the story goes like this in the bible and i always thought who says it's not metaphorically for example like who says it is like that and i was always as a kid already asking why 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 and people didn't really answer and i was pain in the ass and <laughs> nobody wanted did to you talk. did you grow up with this sort of structure i'm gonna reach and grab my pen real quick but did you grow yeah. up with the sort of structure of like a pre like did you already have a, a preconception of like who god was what you taught who God was that you made you really start to start like searching? Like what was, what did that look like for you? Um, it was more that um, when I was on holidays with my dad uh, and we always had these long beach walks. So my dad was the only person mm -hmm. who could handle me. So who could talk to me for a longer period of time. But, Just because um, you have so many questions, right? <laughs> yeah, because I was um, reading so much and I wanted to talk about it and nobody was probably prepared for that and he's a very smart person and he had fun with that i guess and mm. um we were always talking about the things and he told me about his perception of god and this one i could totally relate to when i was a child so for him it was something like a, he said he imagined something like a big brain or just something like with waves and it connects everything and i thought wow yeah that sounds that sounds kind of true and i need to go more into that uh, so, so they sort of crack the shell open, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so it was really, this was, I, I guess, one of the main questions. I thought, what is all of this? So I couldn't <laughs> understand what is all of that. So I never questioned who am I. It was more like, what's all this? Like, what's this picture in front of my eyes? What's that? <laughs> And um, the other thing that I was questioning a lot was mainly every kind of rule. So if something was set in stone and I had to do something, probably not, not basic laws, so nobody had to tell me that I should kill anyone probably, but there were rules in society that I didn't understand. And in some point I adapted to them somehow. And in um, the last couple of years, I again don't understand anything. Just now nobody can punish me for asking questions. So I started to create a podcast. So I thought maybe mm. someone else knows something. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> so that's that's the origin of the podcast is sort of like talking to the collective of like everyone, so to speak, and see, so yes. try to figure out. Yeah, that's so cool. Is this what you do full time or do you do anything yeah. else full time or? Yes, so I'm a copywriter, a concept uh, strategist in advertising agencies. Has and your creativity helped you with that? Yeah, or yeah. I think that's the only thing I am useful for. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you cannot give me any other job. So I tried. It's not working. That's I, awesome. I tried once I was working in a little office and I was, uh, I thought maybe I could do something like service and bringing coffee to people. And it was a super disaster. <laughs> <laughs> what made it so bad? What made it so bad? I didn't even know how to, how to work with this coffee machine. And you can explain it uh. to me like 500 times. It's impossible. I become something like a Kelly Bundy. I don't know. It's <laughs> That's funny. It's cool, though, because I can see, like, the strengths as far as, like, just your individuality, like, just going through your profile and, like, checking things out. Because, of course, like, I want to learn more about you before I get on, on the podcast and whatnot. Yes. So, you know, just going through there and it's just like, you know, I don't know if I've, like, I don't know if I've really, like, talked with somebody who's so, like, free to be themselves so oh. to speak you know what i'm saying so that's cool that's awesome yeah it, it's it feels that. good because um i also think when you feel restricted somehow in expressing yourself this is this is so much weight it, it just doesn't feel good and um mm. what i'm working on more and more is on feeling better and it's so simple and so plain but i feel best when i can totally express myself and okay, sometimes probably I get wrapped up in my thoughts and I think, oh, was it too much or whatever? And I think, you know what? It doesn't matter because if it's too much, then then I'm with the wrong people and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's super fine. But why would you want to be not yourself or to express yourself not as much as you could to spend your time with people that don't really fit to you? So I did that and I felt like I've wasted my time with people who were definitely not for me and um it was not that good time as if i would have it if i was alone for example so i have no problems with that so yeah i was curious as to what sort of like um you know led you to talk to the people that you talk with 
you know. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just like an instinct or something. I just see something, a vibe that I like, and that's enough already. I don't even question that too much. I think, oh, yeah, <laughs> this person looks really fun. I want to talk to this person. Well, it's just like a genuine interest in somebody, right? Yes. Yeah, because I think that's that's what like makes the best conversations is sort of like trying to actually figure out like why is this person like how they are? What you know? What have they gone through in life that makes them you know be the way that they are? So exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it was also like I saw a project, for example, or um, there was an artist uh, last week. Um, I just really liked a song, so there is one song that I I'm celebrating this song since months already. And then I thought, okay, who is the producer? Who did that? And then I found the guy. Well, okay, it was pretty easy. So I, it was uh, on his profile. And um, I wanted to interview this person because this song, it was just insane. <laughs> I wanted to know who did that. What, what kind sort of person? Of, yeah. It, do you find yourself sort of like talking to a lot of artists like that demographic or those who most interest you? Mm, not necessarily. So okay. I would say there are more artists. Um, super different really there was one uh, or two comedians um maybe there will be even more because i really like funny people <laughs> so <laughs> yeah um there definitely can be some artists i had one one actor i was interviewing an actor and sometimes just people who um who have something interesting to say why are you not famous yet <laughs> okay. i don't know i don't think i think i don't think i've done enough work to be honest with you I mean, I always like I've always had the attitude of like, it's my fault. Like if any, if any, if, any, if anything like isn't going the way that I want it to, like, I always think like I must not be doing enough or I must not be making something that's good enough. And it, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, I know you commented on the videos that I had posted, but, you know, sometimes I'll have moments where like I just share what I'm thinking and it's like pretty cut and cut and plain and dry and it's, you know people might judge you for you know expressing yourself in that way but sometimes yeah. i just like being real because i know it doesn't matter yeah. sort of like you said okay. if, if it's too much then you're in the wrong place and if it's too much for the people that are listening then they should unfollow me and not listen to what i got to say you know what i'm saying um yeah. but but yeah i mean i think like i think one of my philosophies so to speak is that if and this is a little harsh for myself but of course this is what I would use on myself, maybe not necessarily to somebody else, but um, I think that if you're not putting the responsibility onto the person, mm -hmm. you're not doing them justice enough to get them to be motivated to do more. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong in that, but um, pretty much what I'm saying is I think that if I have yet to do everything I can in my ability and I have yet to sacrifice all that I have to sacrifice and I still haven't made it, I'm without excuse because if I've, am comfortable living in my hometown and I'm not willing to leave, well, then that's my fault. If I, you know, have the ability to make videos every single day and I'm not doing it, then that's my fault. And I think that, you know, with the internet, I mean, there's, there's potential for anybody to become famous off of almost anything. I guess yeah. I just try to do my part to like keep creating and then maybe the rest will follow, you know, I, all in I time so. too. And right in the right time too, because maybe I'm not ready for it yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So. I would just maybe exchange the word, like not maybe it's not your fault, but just your responsibility. Right. You know? <laughs> just yeah. Not to, yeah. Not to instead of the negative connotation, make it a little more positive. In some yeah. Ways, right. Oh, yeah. It a little bit more true because actually it's not a fault because nothing bad is happening. Hmm. That's so. true. Yeah, that is true. All right. Well, I have a question for you now. Okay. All right. So I heard you say um, in one of the interviews that you're having, um, I don't know if you call it an interview podcast, yeah. same yeah. thing, I guess. Um, you had mentioned you were really on the search for, which this is kind of going back to what we were saying, but you're really on the search for the truth and you pretty much like want nothing but what is true. Yes. Was there, is this still just an extension of, searching for you know who or what is god or is this a result of like something happening in your life that maybe shifted the way you saw the world like what what is the basis of like saying i only want the truth i don't care about you know yeah. not to say you don't care about anything else but you just want the, the facts what what kind of initiated that 
um, self-expression. I'm pretty much sure there is no overall truth. So people have different sorts of truth. So everyone perceives the world in a individual different way um we can experience the same day and for me it was maybe an awful day and you would say it was amazing and just because you have your own bubble already so we have different truths but i want everyone to express their truth as much as they can mm -hmm. so it's more about like being actually yourself or expressing yourself and expressing your truth in order to feel light in order to feel happy because um For myself, like I've realized what God is for me. So for me, it's not really this external brain. It's not this something that is separated from me. So I've realized that I am God. And I know that people, many people don't like to hear that. But I'm not saying it's just me. You are also God. Like I think we are all it. And we are all different facets of this universal truth, of this universal god of this universe so we are all mm. we are all it but we are all so different for a reason um so that the universe can experience itself through all these different lands and where's mm -hmm. the point in trying to see the world in the same way if if the idea is to be different because this is what we are and for that we need to express and we need to experience our truth as much as we can and that's what i wanted to do so i don't even want to experience the same truth as you do for example i just mm -hmm. want pe people to be themselves even on that podcast and that's why i thought okay can i can i make it even uh, can, can i create something stronger than just the podcast okay truth or dare sounds nice because here we have no other choice you know and, I thought, <laughs> right. even, and even if you don't like a question or even if you say or, or you think okay can i answer it like this i don't know and maybe maybe anna thinks i'm stupid or she doesn't like me it doesn't matter because Actually, I don't even judge people, so I, I don't care. I mean, probably if someone is super annoying, especially in a public transport or something. <laughs> in general, <laughs> not. <laughs> That's so, funny. Yeah, so it shouldn't be a problem. And um, yeah, and I really want people to be comfortable with speaking their truth. And if they are uncomfortable, then I want all of us to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because sometimes probably it is triggering. Right. I'm just writing questions down. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sure. I have one more question for you. Actually, I'm asking okay. that. I'm asking that question now, I think for the third time already, because I find it so interesting. Um, <laughs> a friend of mine asked me if there was one of your senses that you could keep. So all the other senses, you lose them. Okay. You keep just one. Which one would it be? Hmm. I think sight. Yeah. I think sight. I think the world is too beautiful to miss out on. I mean, I think that like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's my answer. Everyone, well, 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 same. Well, yeah? Yeah. Mm. I said the same and everyone I asked says the same. Why do you think sight is so important? Um, the um, the friend who asked me already answered that, and I don't find a better answer. So he said it's because um, this is the best possibility to um, experience separation. Because if you wouldn't see things, you wouldn't know that you are not part of a tree, for example, or you wouldn't see yourself as something separate if you wouldn't see the border between you and something else. Yeah. Do you think it's also for direction as well? What I mean is like, I feel like sight lends us like direction. You know what I'm saying? Now that's mm. not entirely true because yeah. you have people that, that live without their sight. Yeah. But in, in, in the same way, it sort of goes back to inspiration because I feel like sight is something that like draws us in certain directions. Like, you know, people talk about wanting to travel the world because they want to see See it. You're you know right. what I'm yes. saying? They want to see this or they want to see that. There's verses in the Bible even that talk about the word of God is like like to my feet. Okay. And I think yeah. that like that's sort of like representing, you know, if you're blind, how are you going to have a sense of of direction even on yeah. top of which I could be wrong about that, you know what I mean? But um there's a that's lot to right. say. Yes, yeah. I didn't think about that yet. Because I thought, yeah. okay, what would I miss if I couldn't see anything? What what would it be? And 
I would really miss colors. So I really like to see different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, What's your favorite but... color? What's your favorite color? Uh, it's difficult. If maybe blue, oh, but like this, blue. like a blue green something in between there, like like the like the ocean when it's when the sun is shining, something like okay. that. <laughs> that's cool what do you like about that color what do you like about that color what, what does it mean to, or does it hit you in a certain way what does it mean does that have a meaning behind it um oh, it's like with with many things that i just like for some reason it's that i i just have this feeling you know this <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's, uh, that's fair that's fair yeah 100 yeah, percent. i don't know how to describe that <laughs> i like that yeah, it's just like a pop. Oh, okay, I like it. I talked about it with my best friend two days ago because he was like, okay, what should I wear to this and that event? I don't know. And I said, hmm, okay, so I have a method for that because I cannot plan my outfits for the week, for example. I cannot. I don't know what I want in five minutes. Really, no, no, no idea. So yeah. what I just do, like, I check what I have and then I have this feeling this. Hmm. <laughs> And then I know, okay. That works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just need to listen right. to that. So it's just listen. And with colors, it's it's this this blue blue green color, this this in between thing, which uh, just makes me. It feels like an inner smile, you know. So okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's yours? Very cool. <laughs> What's um, yours? I think I think black. I think black is my favorite color. And I know it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> bad mojo i don't know but um yeah I, I don't know i just like black i think it's um i think it's a sleek color um i'm a bit of a goofball and so i think that it has like a serious tone to it mm -hmm. it's like it makes up the seriousness that i can't quite i don't know that, <laughs> okay. that's such a weird explanation but like i don't know i, I just like black <laughs> so i'm like wearing it right now yeah, yeah, why not? I mean, black is is great. It always fits. There is, yeah. I think, no no person in this world that cannot wear black. Right. But maybe maybe I would. I don't know what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's sharp. Yeah. I'm over here yeah. talking about how I would miss my sight the most, and I'm like, my favorite color is black. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is terrible. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> Black's my happy color. <laughs> yeah, it's my happy color. It makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to ask you, let me see what I got here. There's a couple questions that I wrote. Um, what, say, aside from philosophy, or maybe and maybe with philosophy as well, like what, what fascinates you the most? What is fascinating to you? So what, what do you think about the most? I think it's, it's that. I'm thinking the whole day. It's just mm -hmm. sometimes little things that happen. Um, that people say to each other and there's like one word and I'm thinking about this word the whole time and I don't know why but I just think about the meaning of it or what it sounds like or what I can do with it sometimes I even wake up with something so I wake up with with a dream and I start thinking mm -hmm. about this dream and then I start thinking about the symbols and so you I'm trying to figure out your dreams like that uh yeah 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 a lot okay. um um I I have a good method to to analyze your dreams Actually, mm. I figured something out. So it's when uh, it's when you try to become the symbol. So for let's say you dream about a lamp, like just a super nice lamp, and you want to know, okay, so why did I? Wh why did the lamp appear? What does it mean? In that situation, I would do like a little meditation, and I would try to become the lamp, which sounds super strange, I know, but it's because it's you. You know, you put the symbols there, so it's your subconscious. Mm -hmm. So whenever I go into the symbol, so I try to think, okay, how does lamp feel? <laughs> I know how this sounds, but but for real, it's you. So if you think, okay, what what do I? What is my experience as as this symbol right now? Then I know why it's there. Because sometimes I read about dream analysis and I'm like, ah, yeah. it doesn't fit at all. Do you ever like look at lamps around you and be like, I wonder what that lamp's feeling right now? <laughs> yes. After your dream, you wake up and you see like three lamps. Are they communicating? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing the whole day. <laughs> What's your cat's name? Fiona. Fiona. Yeah. Fiona. I'm watching two dogs right now. 
one's name oh, yeah. is Rudy and the other one's name is Chloe. And they're like little dogs. Um, yeah. They're cute. The ones from your story. Oh, those are my, um, those are my, my roommates. Roommates. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's their dogs. I'm, I'm at my, um, my uncle's house right now watching, oh, okay. watching his animals. So I give you your question back. <laughs> okay. All right. So. What fascinates me the most? Yes. Hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in some ways, like, <laughs> I ask other people things that I'm not quite sure about because I want to know what, like, fascinates them. Yeah. Somebody look up the definition of fascinates. I got I to gotta look this up real quick. Fascinate. What I thought definition. was, what excites you? like? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Draw, it says, draw irresistibly the attention. Draw irresistibly the attention and interest of. Oh. <sighs> I think <laughs> this sounds really, this doesn't sound very good, but what has been fascinating to me is, so I've been like focused very selfishly on my own world lately, as far as like obsessing about what do I need to do, yeah. right? Like less about, like I spent a lot of my years when I was younger with the whole trying to figure out the whole God thing. Um, because I, I was raised Christian and like I worked at a church and I strongly held very strong, very strong beliefs, like so much so that I was like, you know, trying to convert people when I was in school and like talking to people was like the prime example of like what a believer would be. Um, and so Interesting, that yeah. ruled. Yeah, that like ruled my world um, because I was in this place of it's like self-sacrifice it's like it's not a my life isn't about me but it's about christ right that was my my worldview and it's about sharing the gospel and it's about that i become smaller and christ becomes bigger in my life and that's the whole deal with christianity your life isn't about you but it's about god and it's about sacrifice and it's about, it's about sharing the gospel and living in a yeah. like in a certain manner that is worthy of the gospel. Um, not that like you earn salvation, but that it's by the grace of God through the price of his son. But when I started going through um, a lot of skepticism and doubts and, you know, I had taken a world religion class in college and it just sort of like, I was already having questions about the things because I just, I'm a very skeptical person. And so, mm -hmm. That, on top of my already developing skepticism, like, flipped my world upside down. Because all of a sudden, I saw things differently. And um, in this process, like, I went through a lot of different stuff. Like, I had my world changed, like, with certain relationships with people. And, you know, when, you're, when your world flips upside down, like, you expect it to be something. And then it ends up not being that thing. Um, and your whole identity was based around that, then it flips it, you like don't know who yeah. you are anymore. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you, yeah. you have this, it's like your very identity is like falling through your fingers, like sand. And like, mm -hmm. you think what you thought was real, maybe isn't as real as what you thought. Um, and I'm not even referring to the religious aspect. I'm just saying your belief about yourself. And so, yeah, I've been really fascinated if you want to use it in the term that it is defined as, as being like, irresistibly drawn to of like how can i create the person that i want to be um oh, I love because that. because all my life i spent it like how do i die to self and like how do i die to self and like christ live through me and then in some ways i didn't necessarily i don't know if i've like rejected that and i don't want to say that I know that there's probably people that are going to see this that know me and know me from the church and everything. But like at the same time, it's, it was sort of like, wait a minute, there's things that I'm suppressing about myself that I don't think I should be suppressing. Yeah. And like, it almost felt sinful to express myself musically and to say what's on my mind, like, and to do these certain things. So I've like been fascinated with, you know, how do I, 
continually forego these things that are holding me back. And that's why music, that's why um, I've like, I'm interested in breaking the limiting beliefs that we have and yeah. like the way that we see the world. And um, I used to be really like, quote unquote, fascinated with like outer space and things like this, because I think that when you're looking at things that are bigger than you, it's drawing inspiration to figure out what we came from and who we are. You know, when you look at things that are bigger than you, it's like it instills a sense of awe that like is captivating. And I, I still think that in the same way, though, I don't necessarily pursue the same things. Mm -hmm. I'm still captivated and fascinated by that, which is bigger than me, that inspires me to continually work to be something greater than what I am today. And like, I'll, you know what I'm saying? Like, does that make sense? Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. It feels very similar to what I'm thinking sometimes. I just have different words for that. Okay. Um, for me, it's not to grow into something bigger than me. So I always describe mm. it for myself as I grow more into myself. Mm. Um, what you just described with your identity, and I wrote down a question <laughs> for <Okay>. you, <laughs> the next one. Um, so if you believe that you have an identity or if you, if there is an identity that you are attached to, and if so, then what would it look like? For me, identity would be a story. So my okay, self-concept yeah. or the, the story that I tell myself about myself. And mm -hmm. if you're telling yourself a story about yourself currently, um, which one would it be? And do you believe that you are this story? Mm, that's tough because when you know what you think your identity is, it's a self-perpetuating story. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, it's so bad. Yeah. Because like I'm sitting here thinking about, yeah, I do have an identity. And like, it's so weird because to the outsider's perspective, it seems like I would be really confident in who I am. Mm -hmm. But in reality, I'm not. Mm -hmm. And you would think that I would like, um, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question because like I've, I've always felt like I, I'm not enough. That's the identity that I think that I've held for a really long time. And I yeah. think that like, because of that, like I said, it's a self perpetuating and like, you know, it's a self actualizing, you know, I self sabotage when, and yes. I actually read something. Did you, did you share this or did somebody else share this? I'm not sure if you share this or not, but I saw somebody put like you self sabotage because it's a form of control because like you, you, know what will happen if you do that or if like oh, wow. self-sabotage is like a form of control because instead of allowing yourself to do something or to go about something in a certain way you self-sabotage yes. for that you control it still you know that's i feel that yes i i didn't yeah. share it but i believe that's true yeah because yeah. whatever story we tell ourselves about who we are all these stories are not creative so even if we make them up somehow, but they are all like, from my perspective, we make them up based on stories that we got told. So mm. I got born into the story that I'm Anastasia, that I have, uh, like my parents are from Ukraine, blah, blah, blah. And people from there like food that is salty. I don't know. Just let's invent something, you know, and or, right. um, then creatives, musicians, blah, blah, and they like certain things. And there's always already a self-concept, a story around it. You get born into that and you buy into it or you don't. But most likely you will adapt many, many things. And it's for everyone like that. And then you become this personality. But it's like, for me, it doesn't feel like that's me. It's just a story that people told me. It's not me. <laughs> that's why I always say I'm not Anna. Uh, that's so crazy. I wrote a question here. It said, are you or are you not Anastasia? <laughs> I was like a movie character. And I was like, bot? Hey, why'd you call yourself a, a bot? Yeah. Is that what you put? That's yeah. what you got on your Instagram story, right? Yeah. What I have in my, yeah. my name is I'm not Anastasia. Because I'm not my name. And I'm not the story that people told me. And actually the whole story that I got told, I've, I'm realizing it more and more right now that this story 
is just I'm I'm grateful for this story because this is how I get to understand that it's not me. So mm. I'm living from the contrast. So whatever people tell me, I see doesn't feel right. So by losing myself, I find myself and I lose myself through the story. So that's um, how I figure out what I am by by seeing what I'm not. Do you have an identity? What do you like? What is your take? I want to ask you the same thing. I'm interested. I have an identity like um, there are things that reflect how I see myself when I get caught up in my head, when I think I am Anna, when I become more Anna stage, uh, when I'm in my role, then I have an identity, yes. Um, this identity is very close to what I really am, I would say. So there is not such a big gap. And it's um, mainly because I drop this story as often as I can. So I return back to myself through just being, you know, so I just slow myself down. When I don't feel right with my identity, I slow myself down and I just am. And then I do the things that feel good because for me, this is my compass to express myself. So when things excite me, when I feel super good doing something, this is the real me. And right now it's really close to the story that I'm telling because somehow we still need identity. We still need stories for society. But I tried my story to be as close to who I, who or what I really am as possible. And to answer your question, it would be something very creative, very spontaneous, very funny. And like, I'm something flying. I couldn't even say I have one word for that, but I'm here, there, here, there. Okay. So now I have a better answer for what you had asked me because now I understand it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I still think that as far as like my identity goes, um, like, yeah, like, um, I still feel like what I had mentioned before, like I have the, the cloud that, that hovers, but more so, um, I would say my identity is like, um, is creative and out, outgoing and like meant to be the way that I see myself is that I'm meant to be somewhere of status or like recognition. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember I had a philosophy teacher back in high school mm -hmm. and my philosophy teacher was like, she was like talking about some stuff and like I actually interviewed her at one point in time. So, like, <laughs> you said all these things and like I want to know why you said these things because I want to understand like, oh, it wasn't philosophy. It was a psychology teacher, psychology oh, teacher. Mm -hmm. But she had mentioned she's like, Josh, when you enter a room, you like demand, you demand attention, you demand attention. And I was like, that doesn't sound like a good thing. But at the same time, it's just sort of like my it's how I operate. I feel like if I'm going to be seen, I have to be seen at, to this degree, as in you're going to know I'm there. So it's always been like, I've always been like an attention seeker in some ways. And I've always seen myself as like, I'm going to be a voice for something like teacher would be like, Josh, you need to be like a radio show host. You need to be like this. You need to be that. You know what I'm saying? And I guess maybe I've, I've, I've adopted those things, but at the same time, because I was such a like wild child in class, like they're just saying what they saw. So yeah, um, I would say that's my identity. Like I see myself at some point reaching some level of stature that I think is like big, but I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but I still see it. Like every time yeah. I've dreamt uh, to do something, um, it's always been the top of like whatever it is I go to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if it's like delusional. Even no. if it is delusional. How does it make you feel when you think about that? Makes me feel uh like in what manner thinking about it? Like becoming that person or that I am that person. That you sort of like Well, that you already are that person. If you imagine yourself right. already being that person. Right. Um, it makes me feel good, right? Because like, I feel like I know who I am, mm -hmm. but at the same time, 
I think that there's like outward validation that I feel like I need. Like, so like when I'm not receiving that in some ways, when I'm comparing myself to my expectations that I have for myself, but at the same time, I already, it's weird because like, I already see myself as that person. Like I believe that I will become, and I know that I am. And I think that people are what they are, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like, it can be frustrating knowing that I'm quite literally not recognized or there. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know how to explain it. I know, you know? what you mean. I know what you mean. And I'm I'm currently working on that very topic mm. because okay. um, now you ask me if it's delusional. I think it's not because it makes you feel good. And um, as um, I already said, I, I think um, we are who we really are. So like we realize who we really are by experiencing things that feel good, that naturally feel good. I don't mean things that Mm. feed the ego, that feed the story. That's not it. It's what Mm. genuinely makes you feel good. And if you feel this, maybe it's again this, oh, (laughs) you know. (laughs) (laughs) See the color blue. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So if it's that, (laughs) then it's you. And then it's the opposite of delusional. It's actually the truth. Um, It's just- What would you define as, what would you define as delusional though? Um, it is that you believe you need something. It's when it's ca- when it comes more from your concept, from your ego, let's say, from the story that you tell yourself. So let's say you would be you would feel uncomfortable speaking in public. Let's say you don't like that. You don't like to be the entertainer. You don't like to be a leader. You don't like attention. You don't like it. But you were educated into a role. Um, in which you have to lead, in which you have to entertain, in which you have to be funny, like probably many comedians, for example, or clowns, or whatever, like depressed people who are on stage for whatever reason, um, and they don't really feel good. So mm. you are doing it because you think that this is how you should be, because you think that you are just a good person or you are just worthy to be happy or whatever when you accomplish something. So then it's something delusional because then you are just doing it for achieving something outside of what you are. But when you say it's your, it is not your story, it just makes you feel good. Then you probably also have a story. Yes, probably you have a story that matches Josh or who you really are. And it all comes together somehow, but it's not delusional because you feel the, oh, <laughs> so then it's all fine. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Going back to like being rooted in that true self. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if it aligns, then and it's cool. And I'm currently working with um, that very topic that um, um, there is also something that I wanted to achieve, for example, or I, I want this podcast to be really good. I want people to have to experience joy when they watch it to feel understood to be like yeah to feel ignited or something and um for some reason like my views dropped so in the beginning they were like really high and then i probably because i um, integrated this comedy um, aspect a bit and now the algorithm is confused because i match like different topics or i try to bring two topics together and there is Mm -hmm. nothing that is philosophy and comedy you know people don't know that the algorithm is like what's she doing and um and then i thought now my views are like not as good as they were in the beginning Hmm, what should i do now and now i've realized something for myself that i'm entertaining the bad scenario by giving it more thought by giving it more energy instead of focusing on just doing it because i like to do it So I'm kind of shadowing the whole experience by negative thoughts. And I thought, no, 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 we're not doing that. So if there is the good story that you want and that feels good because podcast feels good, definitely. We want we want to do that. And um, I will, well, I'm focusing on that. And whenever there comes doubt or whenever there comes a negative thought, I just relax. So that's my tip right now. This is um, what helps me a lot is just to let it pass to not react to it because whenever I react, I go into the story and I sabotage myself somehow subconscious doesn't, doesn't matter. I will find a way, but uh, my key currently is non-reaction. And um, with a couple of things, I've realized that that things were stressing me out and I practice non-reaction problem solved. I don't know. It works. (laughs) Just sort of like sitting in it for a second, right? Sitting in the, like in the, would it be, considered like the dis- discomfort or like 
indecision or like, you know, uncertainty. Yes. So to speak. Yeah. Yeah. To be okay with not feeling okay and to not mm -hmm. judge it and to just slow yourself down and to be okay with it, to breathe. Yeah. And it See, that just made me has... take a deep breath. <laughs> right there, yes. Took a deep breath. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Just like, wow. Yeah. Just be cool. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not kind of not um, pushing it away, not pretending yeah. it's not there, but just letting it pass. And that's my experience right now that things start getting better. Because I don't suppress them. I don't push them away. But also, I don't entertain them. And that's the most important thing. So they don't become part of your story. Mm, wow. Wow. Okay. So I got some questions for you right there. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, so that they don't become part of your story. When you said that, right what do i think of automatically well i think of like i mean this is what you're describing but fear i mean this is what fear is like fear is something that we all use to describe our story like we describe in some ways of like why we can or why we can't do something or why we won't do something or yeah it's it's all based around like fear like are there any what's some of your biggest fears okay yeah. that yeah. maybe you've used the ability to sit in the discomfort right and just be okay with not being okay for a second have you ever used yeah. that in like some sort of literal sense to overcome like a particular fear that you've had yes um okay. yeah but I don't know if it's the biggest fear, but definitely I have a fear of rejection. Definitely. Like I think mm -hmm. something terrible will happen, but I don't even know what, you know, I just think everyone hates me right now, but it's not, mm -hmm. it's not even that it's extremely heavy, but it can be for a couple of minutes. It can be a circus up here, or I just had a different opinion than a friend, for example. Mm, and no matter what, I will say it. I know that I will say it anyway. And maybe in a super kind way, I will never offend the person. And then I thought, okay, yeah, shit. Okay, so maybe <laughs> this person doesn't like me anymore. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know that if someone doesn't share my opinion for me, it's not a problem. But other way around could totally be that this person doesn't like me anymore. And I thought, yeah, what do I do with it now? And I relaxed into it. I relaxed into the idea that it could be, yeah, and that it's that everything's okay. It's a couple of minutes just going within and um, not entertaining the story, right? And still knowing that other way around, it wouldn't be an issue. For example, like for me, it wouldn't be. And after this whole situation was over and nothing bad happened, of course, I thought, like, why did I even think so much, or why? Why was I so afraid? Because um, if I know that I would drop anyone for not sharing my opinion, why do I have the fear that it would be different other way around? You know, so it's so strange. <laughs> so it must be such a trigger. And then that's another thing that is um, that became part of my routine. When this is over, like when I manage to stay calm, I say thank you because... I'm really grateful for that if something like that happens because I realize that it triggers something that I don't need. So mm -hmm. it brings something to the surface that doesn't benefit me. It's a fear, this fear of rejection that someone leaves, that um, something terrible happens. And like, even if nothing really, really dramatic happens, okay, maybe I lose a friend. Okay, but life goes on, right? And um, I... Um, I try to say thank you as much as I can for that to everything and to myself to know that um, I I passed something now and something became visible that is a trigger that is like some there there is a pain there is something that I can work through and that's actually very good to realize that yeah like you know something terrible happens and you feel terrible and you have all these um, oh happened here sorry I need to close the door I think my cat <laughs> left. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, and I think, like, yeah, something terrible happened, and uh, why am I even grateful for that? Like, that's 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 so weird to explain it to 
many people, I guess. But I think it's very, very important because that's another step in not letting it becoming your story. It's mm. like you let it go by saying just, okay, thank you. It's like, okay, now it's gone. Now I don't need it anymore. Doesn't mean mm. that the trigger is completely gone. Maybe there will be the next situation, but then you become aware of that. You are aware yeah. of that. You are not the pain. You are not this trigger. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you for answering that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. These dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. My 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 cat. I don't. I don't even know how this happens. It's like a haunted house here because the doors just open. I know that I close them and they just open. I don't know what that is. It's a draft. I don't know. Yeah, if it's, <laughs> if it's a ghost, it could do the dishes at least, something. Yeah, I know. But I have another question. If you have an idol. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a ton of people that I look I look up to. Um, and it all goes back to the basis of, like, they had an idea and they manifested it into reality. Mm -hmm. And I think that, like, you can find these idols in any in any industry, any genre any yeah anything you know i think i really gravitate toward people who who have a vision of what they want their life to be and then they set out and took action to to bring it into fruition like um i've i've fallen in love with almost every rapper like og hey. rapper because i study you know what i'm saying it's like i'm studying them so it's like You know, I've listened to J. Cole and this endlessly. I've listened to Lil Wayne and endlessly. Um, I've listened yeah. to um, uh, Eminem and endlessly. Like all these guys, cool. uh, Kanye, I don't know if I already said that, but like all of these guys that are, like have been on the top, like I listen to them to study them. And then like I burn through all their stuff and then I'm like, okay. And then I get inspiration from somebody else. Um, but not only just them, like I, I've, gain inspiration from people like grant cardone or jordan peterson and like just i think i'm a heavily influenced person i think i'm easily influenced so i think that like i become what i surround myself with like yeah. i'm kind of like i don't mean to be but it's like my personality is kind of like that of like a chameleon and i slowly start to become who i am around Yeah. And I know who I am and I know what I want to do, but if I'm not careful, I can get myself. And so I don't, I don't hang out with a whole lot of people. Like I only have like a small set of like friends, which I think is like normal for most people. I don't know if everybody has like a whole bunch of friends, but like I have a tight knit group of people, but like, I've just noticed that about myself as far as like, if I'm around a certain type of people for long enough, you know, I'll start talking like them. I'll start you know, yeah. being like them in, in certain ways. Yeah. And so definitely influenced. I know that's sort of like a broad answer. And I feel like everything that I've given you has been like more wordy than need be, but um, that would be my answer. Like I'm, I look up to people who have brought things into fruition that they first on, only started as an idea, you know, Yeah. because I want to do that. You know, that that's, that's what draws my attention. So um I surround myself with those stories, you know, yes, yes, yes. to, to then be inspired mm -hmm. to keep moving toward what I envision. I love know? that. Yes. Yeah. People with visions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People that have vision. Um, and, and, and they are sort of like outliers. Like they kind of blaze their own trail. I don't necessarily see myself as a trailblazer, um, but I would say that I'm willing to do things that maybe other people aren't necessarily willing to do as far mm -hmm. as like being vulnerable and like opening myself up to criticism um, and willing to face like that rejection that you spoke about earlier. You know, I've tried many different things um, because of who all I've been inspired by. Like I first was inspired by Ed Sheeran and I, love like, him. I absolutely loved him. Like he was like, everything right and then like i listened to all of his songs when i was yeah. with this girl and then me and this girl broke up and then like i can't listen to ed sheeran any anymore oh no <laughs> oh. so like i don't really listen to him anymore but um but definitely like it's it's moved from <laughs> from person to person and like you know different influence that i've you know been attracted to so 
um yeah i know it's a lot but yeah yeah that's awesome yeah what about you um i actually don't even know <laughs> i think yeah. yeah i think it would be a similar answer like but it's, it's always different people i don't have um this one um idol or someone that i say i want to be like that necessarily not at all there are people mm -hmm. that um i just i just enjoy that they live <laughs> right now so i just enjoy mm -hmm. their existence mm -hmm. somehow do you ever find yourself like you just said just now like i i want to be like or you said that you don't feel yourself ever being like i want to be like that person you don't ever find yourself being envious of other people no no no, no never because um um yeah, for many reasons but the, the main reason is probably that you never know how someone feels you never know right. how someone experiences his truth and his world and you just you simply don't know and i um, mm -hmm. i'm always wondering how people can say i want to be like this star i want to be like this actress and i think wow well, how do they know because then years later you know this person is depressed uh, uh, like taking pills all the time or or like they have some sort of terminal illness that you don't know about and it's just exactly. like you wanted to, you wanted to be that person but you have no clue what's going on in the world Exactly. You yeah. simply don't know. And how often did I hear already from people? And this was even a little bit traumatizing, probably. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like for you, life is easy because of that. Because, yeah, but you, you know how to do this thing. So, of course, it's easier for you to do, let's say, a podcast, for example, because you know how a program works. It's all, this is like to make it very simple. Um, nobody said that, but um, this this is kind of a, a thing right. that people like to say. Or uh, it's easy for you to talk to people because, um, yeah, you know how to talk or whatever. So people will come to you and tell you how easy things are for you because this is how they perceive your reality. But probably it costs you a lot. Probably you are super introvert. Probably you need to fight a battle. Probably you have a shitty day and you still need to go to work. And um, people literally don't know what's going on um mm. inside you and um yeah that's why i cannot be envious and i really enjoy my perspective on life because mm. whenever i talk to people like the feedback that i mostly get is i'm too almost too positive or i am too happy and i i i real i realize that because i see that people tend to take things more serious than i do or it doesn't take them too too much to be really sad about things to be really annoyed with something like for mm -hmm. me it takes a while to get there <laughs> i'm not easily annoyed really um yeah. and um if then i get myself out of there and i know it's work i know it's discipline but i'm willing to do that so i'm always cleaning up the mess so whatever comes uh, is thoughts or feelings that don't benefit me i always clean the mess up and then that's why i'm happy and it feels like many people are not willing to go there, not willing to ask themselves uncomfortable questions, and they are not willing to be uncomfortable. And then they say, it's so easy for me. I'm like, I don't know if it's easy. It's just that I do something. And then it's really nice in my head, and it's really nice in my emotional space. And then I don't want to change, and I don't want to be anyone else <laughs> because I don't know what's going on there. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good answer. I think the perspective on life that you have is so special. It's so individual. If you were not important, you wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. Everything is perfect. It's just that we are so used to our experience and so used to our story that we think life's not perfect. Things are not perfect. It's our definition. Just because it's painful doesn't mean it's not perfect. But um, it's our definition of what is good and bad. But your perspective is so unique and it's so beautiful and it is indeed perfect. So why would you change that? What's your viewpoint on like suffering and death? Like how do you, what, what's the story that you tell yourself behind like people that you've seen struggle or losing people that are close to you? You know, are you able to keep the same attitude as far as like everything, even though, yes, it is painful, but like this is the way that things are. Like, would you say that that's how you view those sort of topics or you know, you what's mean, your ideas on if, that? If it's about death? Yeah, itself? if it's about death or, you know, suffering or I know those are two different things. But um, how do you, you know, when you're when you're thinking about life or like maybe you're 
taking pity on somebody's situation. Um, how do you, what's the conclusion? Well, I, I respect that people suffer and that they have a, a, yeah, the, a, a very painful experience. I really respect that because I also mm -hmm. understand what pain is. I don't, it's not that I don't know what it is and I'm always just, um, um, yeah, just dancing uh, in the streets. It's not reality, but, yeah. um, it's that, I know that everything is my choice and I know that suffering is a choice just as happiness is. It's just mm. that it's not, not always a conscious choice. This is how I see it. So, mm. and let's say death or sicknesses or whatever, like all these things, they are very um, difficult, but I think it it's because of the stories that we create around death. It's our culture. And I mean, okay, Europe, US, all the same at the end of the day. Um, mm. It is how, what we think about death. Actually, I once I asked, what's the definition of life? And there is none. So if there's no definition of life that is useful, then um, it's quite logical. There is not even a definition of death. I don't know what this should be. And it's just that you miss somebody because somebody probably leaves your experience um, mm -hmm. Or and you don't have the same experience with this person anymore. Your story and identity and everything else that's tied up into Ex that. Exactly. But what if you knew that this person is still there, or that the spirit of this person, or that 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 you are not apart from each other? What if you knew mm -hmm. that? And um, currently, for example, my grandmother is um, very sick, so it's dementia, I think you call it, yeah. and. Um, uh, I wouldn't say she's suffering because she was a very um, problematic person. So everything was always a problem for her, every conflicts all the time with everyone. And now that she's literally losing her mind, she's mm. easy go easy going. So you can mm. handle her. It's it's okay uh, because she's like a child. Okay, she's probably swearing mm. a lot, but it's quite funny. And but there is no no real issue. You don't need to fight with her. I mean, she never she was never fighting with me, but with my mother, with everyone. And um, I I just thought, okay, so if she dies, which will certainly happen, I kind of know that she doesn't leave me. So my reality mm. is that maybe then <laughs> I don't know. That's just my perspective because I mm. I feel like maybe then I can even communicate better with her because right now, like her mind is a bit weird and it's difficult to ask her things. And when all that, like all the sickness, everything that's holding her back, if all that is gone, like let's say the flesh prison, <laughs> so it's, it's gone. So maybe then I have a better connection mm. because I, I had experiences that were like very profound or really big spiritual experiences where I saw things that are not physical and um or experience them in different forms and now i think okay then <laughs> let's see what happens next so i'm more like um curious about what i can do with that and i don't try to program myself too much into that's a goodbye forever and so on because it's also just a belief atheism everything is just a belief nobody knows just from mm. my experience it's not the end there is no death Pro there there is just a change. So that's why I'm not that judg judgmental on that. <laughs> I'm sorry, these dogs. What's your answer? For what exactly? What did I ask you? It was um, how do I, um, how how do do I you... handle suffering and death and whatnot? Yes. When in the church that like I grew up in, like I, I, honestly, this is such a, like an integral part of like who I am. That I don't think I'll ever like pull the roots out. Like, I don't think the roots, like I might pull the top off, but the roots like are going to remain in there. Yeah. And it, it, it's, uh, I don't know if I could see the world in any other way unbiasedly. Um, but like, you know, in the church, like you're always worried about, or and within the scriptures, you're thinking about like the judgment and like condemnation that can come after life. And like, mm -hmm. you're always thinking about my good or bad person and all of this stuff when I finally like got to this point of, and I can't speak on like for other people because I don't know what's going to happen for other people. I've never like been alive and then not alive to my knowledge. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I've, I've never like, you know, this is my first go around from what I un understand and from what I know. Um, and like, 
so there's always been like the fear of what what happens afterwards in some in some sense um but there came a point where i was just like dude if i'm gonna like believe in this jesus thing right if i'm gonna believe in this then i have to just accept it for what it is and like if i do bad things like i do bad things and that's because um i like quite literally am human and there's things that will provoke me to do certain things that aren't necessarily the best thing at the time i've come to a place where like i accept myself not to say that i'm good where i'm at because i know that i'm not so to speak as far as like doing the best that i can do i had to come to a place where i had to give myself grace and it was a place where like take your name right say that i have a board right here right Mm -hmm. where's this at how do i how do i move this around (laughs) yeah all right all right i don't know i can't do this (laughs) but i got a board up here right Mm -hmm. and i'm writing my name it's Josh, right? And my name is, I, I can write all of the bad things that I do or judge myself for. Because like my mind is automatically wired to start thinking about like being judged for my life and what I've done. That's just how my mind works because yeah, yeah. of how I was grew up. So when I think about death or suffering, you know, I think about, oh man, like what's going to happen or like how, am I, how did I live my life or, you know. That sort of thing. More so about death than suffering. But I got my name Josh, right? And all of a sudden, I, I take I take this paintbrush that I've drawn on the wall, Josh, and I dip it into this paint bucket. And when I paint it over top of my name, it says humanity. Okay, mm-hmm. what did I just do there? What I'm saying is inside me is all humanity, right? I am a direct copy of my ancestors. Like literally, my DNA has been copied, 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 copied. You know, it's been put down, put down, put down. And then I'm just a result of my ancestors. So like within me is all of humanity, right? And that's the way that I see it. It's all of the things that are of poetry. And like, I've always thought like, okay, there's historical truth. And then there is like what I like to call spiritual truth. Okay. And like spiritual truth is the thing is, are the concepts of like love, honor, respect um all these ideas right that are sort of cross-culturally the same that could be argued but cross-culturally mostly these ideas of like having honor right doing what is right um and um love and you know compassion and these ideas have have been from what i understand universal yeah and then you have like historical truth of like was Jesus a real person or was he not? Was is like, like these sort of things that you can argue about historically, but I've more so have learned to like, get rid of like arguing about the historical stuff and coming to know more of like the spiritual truth, so to speak, because I think that's what matters because ultimately I think it's the relationships in our lives that are most important. And we operate off of these like spiritual, emotional sort of interactions. And I think like when I say here, Josh, you know, and I'm writing all these things that I think that I've done are, that are bad, right? Yeah. And I just paint over humanity. What I'm doing there is I'm saying, okay, like I am what I am because I'm a copy of what was before me. Just sort of like when I was in my mother's womb, so to mm-hmm. speak, right? I had hands to feel. I had eyes to see. I had nose to smell. I had ears to hear. And yet I was practically using none of those things yet. But so I was made for a world that I did not know yet, but the world yes. knew of me. The world knew of me before I knew of the world. Do you see what I'm saying? It's sort of like yeah. I was made with all the tools to operate in the world <laughs> that I didn't know. You see what I'm saying? And so I know this is a long form answer, but I sort of graduated from this place of like judgment and being like, oh, I'm wrong for this to, to analyzing myself in more of a perspective of that, which is, you know, I am... I am this piece of the rest of humanity and everything that I do that is wrong is common amongst all other men. And like everything that I've done that has been good and right has been common amongst other men. Like, you know, when you start getting the false sense of like, I'm better than other people or I'm worse than other people, you're, you're starting to deceive yourself because really you're just like everyone else so to speak in your own unique way but you got to be able to see yourself as though i'm just i'm nothing 
not not to take away from your uniqueness and your mm-hmm. unique identity, but I'm nothing special. That doesn't. So yeah, when yeah. people start getting really down on themselves, dude, why are you so down on yourself? Stop being so down on yourself. You're nothing special. And that doesn't see, I'm not meaning that in a bad way. I mean, like, bro, like you don't think I have feelings like that too. Like, it's mm-hmm. okay, man. Come on, pick your head up. It's okay. Like keep going. And so yeah. I know this is sort of like a weird answer to answer the question of like the death and how I handled that, but it relates to what I'm talking about because when I would think about death, I would think about, did that person go to heaven or hell? That was my okay, I get it. idea. Yeah. So this is all relating back to that. I'm promising we'll make it come together, but it's, mm-hmm. it's mainly that because it's based off of this, like, you know, how did they live and who did they believe in? Right. Because it's more so about in the Christian idea, who you believe in as well as how you lived, but more so what your faith is in. So uh, yeah. when I think about that, I, I would sort of like get stressed out and it would be like a really bad thing because most likely this person wasn't going to the good place. Right. Mm-hmm. And the way that I see it now is sort of like, you know, God, if, if God is this character that I've believed in for a long time, or that has been so ingrained in my mind, when I look at Mm -hmm. death, I say, God, I would just pray that you have grace, like grace on me. And like, like, I hope that, you know, the things that I've done wrong are like forgiven, but like, I know that's such a weird thing idea but i can't separate the ideas almost in my mind like i can't just think about like death like yeah it's a continuation of this but it's like i have this other side and and my mind is like does it mean this or because it has two meanings in my world Mm -hmm. or or it had for so long um and so you know i've just sort of kind of come to a place almost like what you described as it is what it is like you said it was a choice and i say life is seasons Right. I say like life is seasons, just like the seasons come and go. Like you're going to have seasons of pain where you're hurt and you're going to have seasons where you have to heal and you're going to get better. And you have seasons where you get new, like there's going to be new moments in your life. And it's just these seasons that you will experience again. And sometimes you won't ever experience those seasons again, but it's life. And that's the way that it is. And, um, you know, I've always asked like, been like you know what is the where like where did all this come from like what's the the purpose of it all like you know i think that people really are something special that are walking on this earth i I think like you look at all like all of creation is beautiful and like there are super intelligent other creatures on this earth like dolphins like they're super intelligent they got like large brains and they're smart and (laughs) elephants are too but at the same time it's like there's I don't want to say there's nothing quite as special because it's all special. But what I'm saying is that we're a very unique, like creature, <laughs> I think. And I think that yeah. there's a lot of evidence that suggests that, you know, some people would say we're, we're really destructive. Other people would say, you know, we do wonderful things. I think we do wonderful things. And I think that we can be destructive, but like, you know, yeah. it's all, it's all there. But I think that is a really interesting thing because it, yeah. it signifies the end of something. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like you think about life, you know, you're thinking about where am I going? Right. You know where you are. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm I'm just drawing something out. Yeah. And you think, where am I going? And the reason why we ask ourselves, where am I going is because we're trying to find reason and purpose behind what we're doing. You see what I'm saying? We're trying to come up with that story of why did I go through this? Why did this happen? Yes. What is going to be the what is going to be the turnout of this and yada yada and then we all know it comes to an <laughs> end, yeah, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And and what's interesting is that like we project our own reality onto the rest of the world. So like we think, okay, the start of humanity, where is it going? Why did this happen? Why did all these things? You know, and where are we going? There must be an end to it all. So that's where like you come up with these stories. I mean, I I would guess that's where these religions and stuff come from that are all different from everybody is because we're trying to get an understanding of like where things are going but it's interesting because it's a projection of our own little world to where we have a beginning you know we go through this stuff and then we have an end and you know we expect that the same must be true about the outside world around us um but i always wonder and this is sort of like i'm pivoting before i pivot i don't know if you have anything to add to that or if you have any thoughts yeah, I just think it's interesting. That's my long answer 
that incorporates a lot of different things. When you have conversations with people, you say things and you think of things that you wouldn't normally think. Like sometimes you, you won't come to the conclusion of, you know what I'm saying? Like if you were by yourself or it's, and it's also nice to have it documented because yeah, that's part of like why I write is like I started with journaling and then I did voice hey. memos and then I did journaling and voice memos and I would give the direct timestamp right. and like, I would give like, I would give like timestamps as in this happened yesterday. I did this today so that I would understand like what mind frame I was in. And so that ultimately turned into writing songs, which then, you know, I've recorded my life like from when I was like 14, 15. So I've recorded that. And so this is probably not healthy for the sake of me being able to live in the present, but like part of my identity is that like, I'm going to get to the top somewhere and I'm going to share all this that I've like experienced and like come to understand so that other people can learn from like what I've experienced in some ways, you know? Yeah. But, maybe, maybe there wouldn't be too much art coming from people just being in the present. So it would be very peaceful and, um, but we wouldn't paint, we wouldn't mm -hmm. write songs and we wouldn't do, we wouldn't write right. music without right. our stories. We yeah. need the suffering. <laughs> without suffering, <laughs> there's right. no art. <laughs> yeah, right. And and that's pretty cool too, because that's like a common idea amongst many different like philosophies. You know, suffering is like life is suffering. You know, it's it's there to build character. It's there to give you perseverance. It's there to make you more or more yeah. capable, more capable, so yeah. to speak. I mean, you just, um, again, you just make a choice if you're conscious about why you are suffering or that if you're conscious that you are actually suffering, this is already a good step. For me, suffering is everything that's not peaceful when I'm annoyed also. And sometimes that's fine. So I just think there is this little minute of separation within myself that I think, should I freak out now or not? So I have the choice between staying calm let it pass and having a nice day. And sometimes I think, you know what? I want the experience now. <laughs> let it all burn. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, let it all burn. Exactly. That's yeah. another That's And cool. I want it then. Yes. And then, it's, then it burns. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a conscious, it's a conscious choice. Yeah. Yeah. Not even in my head. It's somewhere like in the, in the back end, but I can feel it. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. And I know I can stop myself now. It's still okay. It's still okay. But there is like, Something, something that they, I just feel I want to do it now. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, okay right. let's try it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It's like intuition in a way. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have one question for you because before I forget about it, because um, you said it a couple of minutes ago and I found it so interesting because I never, never thought about ourselves as a copy of our ancestors. So, yes, I never had that thought because I feel extremely disconnected from my whole family, actually. So, okay. <laughs> like, I, I feel so lost. I don't know. I, <laughs> you could tell me anyone. You could tell me any person, family, whatever I would think. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't feel it, but fine. So, I, I really don't feel like I'm part of this family. I'm part of their problems. I'm part of their Jeans. So that's why when people show me pictures um, of them being young or of my grand grandmother that I never saw or whatever, I always think nothing. I'm like, mm -hmm. cool. Like, you know, like, like, okay. Like, I don't, like, yeah. you're not concerned with it really. And I get that. Yeah. Like, no yeah. emotion, nothing. Like, they could show me a stone or something. I really just. I, and I'm not interested. So, um, I, for example, I don't know who my real grandfather is, for example. And the, I know that there are people who pay money to figure out where they come from or they want to know um, mm. which from which parts of the world um, their ancestors come. And I really don't care because I think, okay, and if I'm from Spain, so what? Or like, how would it influence my life? So I kind of, I feel extreme, like without any roots in that direction. Um, but I thought the idea of being a copy, what do you feel? Is it a copy or is it an upgrade? I think it's a copy. And that's my, and the reason why I'll explain why is because when I read to, when I read the stories of like 
that were written like thousands of years ago. I mean, mm-hmm. when I think about like the historical, when I think about the Bible, for example, um, when, when that was written, you know, that was written thousands of years ago um, or maybe, maybe, you know, a couple hundred parts just depends on what part you're talking about. Yeah. Um, um, people are people throughout the generations. And I think that like the idea that the ideas that I was sharing as far as love, honor, service, and these things that are intangible, but like we understand on an emotional level, I think have always been the same. And I think that like universally they are the same. And so, you know, though we might change in looks or say we might be distant as far as like some of the DNA, I think people are people. And I think that that's why the message, the messages that are portrayed in these books that are old, that people would maybe say, why would you listen to a book written so far long ago? Well, the reason why I would listen is because just because it's not about science, about like historical fact. When I say historical fact, I mean even like present fact, like mm-hmm. tangible fact doesn't mean that there isn't spiritual truths. And like to me, the spiritual truths are these things on like how do we communicate with people? How do we treat each other? How do we do these yeah. things? Like how is a mom going to treat their young? Like that's I mean, that's a universal attitude throughout even the animals. Like you see like a mama bear is going to protect her young and like. Yeah. Because why? Because it's built in them to do that. And like yeah. these things, like we, I don't think we realize how much of our nature is that because it was ingrained in our DNA and in our systems. Like we are no more than what we are and we can only work with what we've been given. Um, mm-hmm. And what I mean is like, you know, the brain, the brain's capacity, um, the ability to comprehend certain things. Like we can only know so, so much. And there's a limitation there at some point Yeah. In, in, in my mind. And so what I'm saying is that we are copies because these people from the ancient days still felt things like love and they still felt things like um, honor and they still felt things like maybe they ha- they've had ha- hatred, envy, um, even the negative things. Um, and you could say an upgrade, you know, but when I think of upgrade, I just think of like what's on the outside, right? Wow, this is this is an upgrade compared to what they wore back in the day. You know, I got a car, I might fly in a jet, mm-hmm. I might do these things that are more advanced than what say these people lived. But guess what? I'm still a direct copy because strip me from my clothes, strip me from my technology, strip me from anything else. I'm a man, and I'm I stand flesh and blood, and the DNA of my ancestors courses through my body within me is all of humanity. That is where you can find instead of being like, woe is me. Life is so hard. It's like, wait a minute, dude, like all of mankind has lived this life. And then at the same time, you look at um, any creature, right? Like think about all that man has studied and all of the creatures on the earth. Like they have behavior patterns. They have, like a beaver knows how to build a dam and no one ever taught him how to be- build a dam. Yes. Right? A, bee- a bee knows how to do bee things and no one ever taught him how to do bee things. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, dogs all generally kind of act the same. And even when you start to learn about different breeds of animals, some have more yeah. tendencies towards this and more tendencies towards that. And like you yeah. think about, you know, there's some, uh, there's some cultures that are more inclined to music and there's some cultures that are more inclined for this and for that. Yeah. And I, I just think that that's true. And so mm-hmm. like when I, I've learned a lot about myself by learning about my family, I can share one quick thing with you. My grandfather didn't know he had a condition, but he had a condition mm-hmm. and he passed it down to my father. My father didn't know he had this condition, but he passed it down to my sister. All right. My sister ended up developing this condition. And so my sister had this when she was young. Later down the road, all of a sudden, I'm having problems. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? My grandfather in his late 80s ended up having these symptoms, but we never knew that he had it. We didn't know where it came from. But see, if he would have passed away before before that time, we would have never known where it came from. But guess what? Grandpa's having problems now. Guess what? My dad starts having problems with the same thing. So my grandfather had it. My dad had it. 
and my sister had it, yeah. and I had it. And you think, where did that come from? Why did I have that? Because my grandfather had it. He passed it down to me. Yeah. And so there's mm-hmm. things that we 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 physically get, just like mm-hmm. how you might look like your mom or dad. Which one do you look like? Do you look like either one of them? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you got you got the eyes of your mother or father? My dad more, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, and it's like <laughs> these things, it's these things that are passed down to us. And I think in the same way, it can be related to our personality types. Um, yeah. If you get to go far enough back, you'll get to see where it comes from. So I just think that like to have grace on ourselves and to see ourselves as a universal unit in one, you know what I'm saying? In some yeah. weird way is how my mind works. That's how I come to understand myself better and to like have grace on myself to not be mm-hmm. as hard on myself because just like how a bear has its its ways of acting and a a lion has its way of acting well people have their way of acting too and it's a lot harder for us to recognize and to maybe maybe categorize these things when we are the thing you know what i'm saying but when you start realizing why do i keep doing this dumb thing i shouldn't be doing anymore and it's like probably because like you have something going on within you that that causes you to do that and you know you're just gonna have to take a really intentional effort to maybe change your course of direction because if not you might be on autopilot and instinctually in some ways may continue doing these certain things but i know i talk a lot but no 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 and i can totally relate to that so um i i always forget which animal it was i always forget i don't know how is it even possible i always refer to that story then i look it up and i forget it again it's like the coffee machine i'm just really not uh, (laughs) capable of remembering some stuff (laughs) so they are like (laughs) what do i always say okay this time it will be rats last time i think i said hamsters i really don't know so scientists did an experiment with them and they had a group of mice and a whole generation of mice were afraid of touching a spot in the cage because they were electroshocked i think it was something like that but the crazy (laughs) part comes uh when we talk about the offspring because um the offspring didn't know about this but the offspring was afraid of the same spot the fear was already instilled (laughs) yes it also works on on an emotional level that you can pass that on because i was always asking myself for example this fear of rejection that we were talking about i was always asking myself where does this come from i thought maybe it's also not mine can be that easy so yeah, may- maybe we are copies. Yes, I will have to think about that because when I was maybe. thinking, yeah, yeah, I was just saying maybe maybe you could um do a little more research in some of um and maybe you could learn a little bit more. Maybe you could learn something about someone in in your lineage that maybe could tell you something about yourself. I have a last question for you, but a fun one. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, if you were an animal, which one would you be and why? <laughs> I feel like people misrepresent themselves. So I feel like if I said I was something, I would probably not be that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever animal would probably feel that way about something, that would probably be what I don't know. I've had people tell me, I've, I've had someone tell me I look like a lemur. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of mean. They're probably picking on me. I didn't realize it. I wouldn't want to be in the ocean because the ocean is scary. That play. I mean, if you're an animal, you're going to be cool with it. You know what I mean? You're yeah. going to be like, if you're like a massive, <laughs> if you're a massive whale, you'd be like, this is my home, dude. I don't care. But to me, that sounds scary. So I probably wouldn't choose that. I, I think it'd be cool to be like a bird or some, some sort of bird. Oh, yeah. Some sort of bird, maybe. Um, Or like, uh, huh. be like a cool bird, you know, I want to be like an eagle or something, you know? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I a don't good know. one. What about you? Yeah, I I never asked myself this question, so I was also like thinking, okay, okay, what could it be? <laughs> and you inspired me actually because you you said not the ocean, and I thought, okay, I think for me it could be the ocean because I love the ocean. Could be some an ocean animal, and I was just thinking like my first answer would have been a cat because I really like cats, but then I thought, mm. but I only like, I mean, I like them for many reasons, but of course, as a human, you like them because they're sweet and fluffy and funny and everything but if you're a cat yourself i don't know if it's if you have the same advantages you know so (laughs) (laughs) if 
it's not like you think, oh, I'm so pretty the whole time and you're the cat. Right. So, it's, yeah. so maybe it doesn't make sense. But maybe that's part of like a cat's personality though too. I feel like a cat will be in the mirror like, mm, look at me, you know, looking at his yeah. paws, combing his yeah. hair. <laughs> Yeah, there was one meme that said, like, if cats w would text you back, they wouldn't, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds about right. That's yeah. funny. Yes. Yeah, uh, maybe a bird sounds good. An owl. I would like to be an owl. Okay. Yeah. Because they're they like some... flying cats. <laughs> yeah, well, they are, like, straight up. Like, I've always thought, like, my cats were like owls. Like, the way that they, they'll, like, yes. turn their head sometimes, and, like, they'll look around. It's like, that's an owl. That's an owl in disguise, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're still fluffy and cute, and they can fly. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> and they have they have special wings, like special feathers, that make them silent when they fly. Oh, yeah, I will be a white one, like the snow owl. Oh. Right. Oh. Yeah, those are really pretty creatures. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Do you have one more question? I was going to ask you some about um. Jacques the Sock. Oh, of course. Do you want to ask me or you want to ask Jacques directly? I'll ask Jacques. Okay, okay, Jacques. <laughs> All right. Jacques, oh. get up here. Yeah, yeah, wait. We, wait, he's not dressed oh, now. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got your clothes on now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Hey, well, um, Jacques, I saw where you had, um, you had lost your first love in a washing machine. Um, do you... Do you think you'll you'll ever find love again? Do you think you'll find her in that um in that uh Okay, I'll translate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's it's a very difficult language and he's drunk, so I I, I am the only one who can understand <laughs> that. <laughs> wow, I shouldn't have brought up his first love. Yeah. He's yeah. been drinking on that one. That's probably ugh, he's gonna be down the dump. Yeah, so the story is already complete. Um in my mind or we already know how it will end oh. for Jacques. but okay. Jacques, Jacques doesn't know yet uh, concretely okay. but yeah but um it is that well I, I cannot tell too much the, the right, thing is right. that he's um well he lost he lost his first love her name is Hope so Jack lost hope, and that's quite a problem because oh. that makes him it makes him <laughs> a, a, a really depressed sock. So Oof. he's like actually he's a demotivational sock. That's he's why he's like me for real. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, he has his own um, Instagram channel, and there he posts demotivational quotes. Um, or mm -hmm. sometimes he tries. Sometimes he tries to say something nice, but. It, kind of doesn't work i actually already said that probably something like my personality disorder because i'm so positive that i need this something that is hating the whole day uh, i love it yeah. i love it i was wondering like how did jack come about is he just like bird what's going on um yeah so his story was um that um i had an uh, I had to film an episode about um, love languages because a friend of mine was reading something about psychology and she said like there are five different love languages and pe everyone has a different focus for example some people like presence other people um, show that they like you by spending time with you for example so there are different types of love languages and I thought okay that's interesting I will interview you but now I need a teaser for that episode so I need to say something like coming soon and I want to have a situation where you see a couple and we were just about to go to an Irish pub and to get drunk with another friend and I thought okay what am I doing now I want to film it today and I just grabbed a sock I don't know what it was like something I just <laughs> grabbed the sock and I said that's my boyfriend <laughs> that's <laughs> yes. funny then I've seen I've seen you take him taking him to the concerts and stuff what is the response <laughs> what is yeah um so um, there are people that's actually quite funny because people try not to look so that's even funnier as if they would just look at it you know so they're just right. like like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm just doing my thing I'm, I'm also walking around with him and um just in the park filming while he speaks and do you do you get nervous with jack you know with you do you get nervous with them with you, like out in public and stuff? Or no, <laughs> you, don't, you don't care. <laughs> no, I don't care. I think it's funny. Awesome. I, I just look at the people also, and they are 
that's really funny how people try not to look, but still when there's a couple, for example, of course they talk about you and it's so obvious, but they try yeah. not to show it. And I'm like, oh, come on, that's so ridiculously funny. Why don't you just show it? <laughs> I, love your, I love your sense of humor. I see the stuff that you put up on Instagram all the time and it's just, it's so funny. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, that, yeah, that's like, yeah, I think this is like my self-expression because um yeah just being ridiculous is just my thing and <laughs> and i thought you know jacques is um well it was a joke in the beginning i really wanted to just have this um, relationship situation just to film it like how we are arguing or something and then i thought why not having a co-host on the podcast so <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> making it a bigger thing actually <laughs> that's awesome yeah. yeah, and now I can I cannot really say yet what will happen to Hope, but for now he's a demotivational sock that is traveling dimensions because he's searching and he will search for a while. Sorry, yeah, mm. but uh, he will he will keep searching. But um, there will be a happy end. But if it's Hope or not, we will see. <laughs> oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be I'll be buckled up, wait waiting to see what happens <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and i can i can speak very freely right now because he's so drunk that he won't remember tomorrow <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> he doesn't know a thing he don't know up from down right now no no that's funny no. but we didn't use him so we were honest the whole time we didn't even need a that's good talk. I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed talking to you finally. Yes. I know it's been some time, so, oh, I'm, so I'm really happy to be a part of it today. We can definitely repeat that and have a couple of people that I like to have interviews often with because it's just really a pleasure. So it's really nice to talk to and yeah, let's do that again. Very nice. Let's do it. Yeah. Thank you very, very Thank much you. for having time today. It was really amazing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.